Astro Travelers, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Tavat, a Genshin Lore podcast. Last week, we discussed the Bloodstained Knight and his possible Fatui form. We're hoping we'll get some more concrete evidence on our theories when Fontaine's released soon. This week, we'll be discussing the mysterious Rosaria. Additionally, I want to remind travelers to visit TalesToVot.com to see visual representations of the lore mentioned during today's podcast. Your guides have put them together for you to make things a little easier to understand. On our site, you can also find some awesome goodies, including artist spotlights from the community for each episode, wallpapers for download, and a way to check out some of our favorite Genshin merch. Finally, feel free to email us at TalesToVotPod at gmail.com to let us know what you think of this week's episode and what topics you'd like to see in the future. So, Miss Rosaria, she is the sexiest nun Mm -hmm. in the church. That she is. Also considered the laziest nun (laughs) of the church, right? (laughs) And has the best booty in all of Genshin, according to Tiff. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That she does. Al goes, according to Tiff. (laughs) No, according to everything, because Rosaria has the best No, I'm not on this train. I'm not on this train. It's Shenha. It's Shenha. It's Shenha. It's Shenha. I don't care. It doesn't matter. This episode is about Rosaria. (laughs) Whoa. Where can I meet her? Y'all both need to chill because, first of all, it's Mona. Oh, my God. (laughs) I think Kaya has the best button. (laughs) (laughs) Get out. Out. Out, I say. I cast the out. No, not this disgrace. Booties aside, though, dang, I feel like we needed like boxing clubs, B, right? Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Brandon and I needed them to protect ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> Rosaria, she is one of the few characters in Monset that isn't nice, really. Oh, it's true, though. <laughs> she comes off as not nice. How is that? Like, she's not a charming Monstadian. No, she's, she's not. not friendly. No, she's very cold. I'd say she's nice she's just wary she doesn't like outsiders understandable she's an outsider she is an outsider she has a lot of trauma that's true i'll give her credit there, there's a reason she doesn't trust outsiders and that's because she was one and she knew what she was doing you know i think me and a lot of other fan fiction writers have missed a grand opportunity in genshin how so our original characters our ocs should be therapists <laughs> <laughs> Our characters would be so rich. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got all these physical doctors. Where are our mental health doctors in Genshin? <laughs> Hoyo, are you listening? <laughs> Get a therapist. But Rosaria, she is a sister at the Church of Favonius. She works with Barbara. Mm-hmm. She knows, I presume, Simon Pegg and some of the other people. We've mentioned that one deacon that's like really creepy who like sleeps through <laughs> everything. Right. <laughs> is that Deacon Delilah? No. No, you're thinking of you're thinking of Calvin, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, Calvin. Oh. <laughs> I feel like though, I think in Monster everybody knows each other in general. I mean, there's only like 15 of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the whole city. Hey, hey, that's because the Calvary is out doing stuff. <laughs> They'll be back with their horses. Okay, so then there'll be 25 of us. <laughs> Stop. That's after they all die at the end of the game. Oh, no. Oh, so much fucking death. <laughs> all the time. Anyway, Rosaria is a polearm. She's also one of Tiff's favorite characters. Yes, she is. She is my main. Well, I still call her my main. I've probably I've actually moved to Raiden actually being my main. But Rosaria is in my party, even if I'm not using her. I even have one controller where the button doesn't work. So she sits in that slot because she's always got to be with me. She's my girl. I didn't realize until today that she has this buff where if you have her in your party and it's nighttime outside that you'll move faster. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. I thought that was so cool. That's so funny. (laughs) I thought it was crazy. It's so goth. Because when I did it, I was just like, she seems really like, is she just really fast up here on Snarstatch? Like, I don't understand. It's amazing. She uses that speed all through her childhood. It it makes sense, though, because she does, while she is not a very good sister, her day job, her real job is actually, as she puts it, clearing the filth from Mondstadt. And basically at night, she is like the OG Dark Knight hero. She goes out and fights everything (laughs) and kind of keeps Mondstadt safe. Mm -hmm. She's a little bit more of a thug than a sister. Like she's makes some comments even to that side of like, you know, when it's your birthday, she's like, oh, you you need any fixing? Like, I I can do it. I can do it for you. (laughs) You need me to take out anyone? Yeah. She's like, prayer? Fuck that. 
but you need someone's kneecaps broken, I'm your girl. <laughs> that was her iron knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just like, Rosaria, I just like like an ice cream cake. <laughs> That's all I need for my birthday. Well, did you ever see those things she's wearing on her fingers? <laughs> she's going to scratch. Them. They're scary. She'd injure me so quickly. Uh-huh. I have some very sensitive skin. They're used for scooping ice cream and guts. Yeah. <laughs> so Rosaria, like we've said, is in the Church of Favonius, but she's not originally from Mondstadt. She actually is from currently a place unknown, though we do have our thoughts about that as well. But she was kidnapped as a child. Yeah, she grew up in a village in the mountains far away from Mondstadt. It never actually says the place, but we know that it's not logistically close. (laughs) Yeah, she was kidnapped by a bunch of bandits that ransacked her village. And basically, while I don't think they say it in black and white, we can assume that they killed her parents and made her an orphan because, you know, it's it's Genshin. (laughs) Everybody's an orphan. Orphan alert. Orphan alert. (laughs) Orphan alert. Orphan alert. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they they stole her as a baby. Baby napped. Yeah, we can assume like there must have been other kids too. Like this probably wasn't the first time they ever did this. And she grew up like being a crook and a thief and they kind of like, I don't know. I don't know if anybody's ever seen Oliver, but you know how like they use the little kids to like go like pickpocket? That's kind of what I imagine was going on. <laughs> exactly. Except with murder. They waited till they were a little bit older to murder. They gradually got to murder. <laughs> so not a child being a boss ass bitch with nails just like slashing people's throats. I should think she had to work up for uh, work up to. But she got there. Don't worry. Wait, so you said that she was raised or born in like the areas of the mountains surrounding Monster? Yes. They specifically say the faraway mountains in a village. I feel like everywhere is a mountain. Like that doesn't yeah. really help you figure out. There are some thoughts that it could be Dragonspine, but I think that's only because it's really the only mountain we have right now. But I would assume that if our thinking is right, that Shinsnaya is going to be north because cold makes sense. It wouldn't be odd to think that there could be mountains up there. Or once we get the port of Mondstadt, are there mountains even behind Zavalin's lair and stuff like that? Or could it even be like she's from Leeway? Yeah, I was thinking like Leeway or Sumeru both have mountains too. Mm -hmm. And depending, we still, and this will go into my theory of why she's from Fontaine, but we don't know if Fontaine has like outreaching mountains or like that could be closer to Mondstadt. And that could be highly possible. Yeah, and I I think, I mean, we also can't discount not long because we don't even know anybody from not long. And she is the only one with that color skin say do we know who's got gray skin yeah <laughs> like chi chi doesn't even have gray skin yeah. yeah which i'm like why yeah i was gonna say isn't that just because she's so pale because she only goes out at night <laughs> she's so pale that she started to get rigor mortis gray <laughs> here's the thing she's never really out in the sun is she <laughs> i just think she's that pale either that or she's like legit dead is fully undead and not like revived because like chi chi's a zombie but she's more revivified maybe She's she's missing the vitamin D. She's anemic. <laughs> Very much. It could be. I'm making fun of someone who's sick. Or it could be. Guys, no. Can we go back to her being like a vampire or something? Like, <laughs> damn. Oh, no. Those things can be true. Give this girl some iron. So she's a sickly vampire. <laughs> A bitchy, sickly vampire. <laughs> well, why do you think she's always in such a bad mood? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And also why she smokes cigarettes to hide this smell of blood in her mouth. I will say, I like the idea of her being from Fontaine. I have no thoughts or theories just because what if she's a mermaid? What if she's like a siren? <laughs> Anything is possible. I don't think so because she's just like a regular (laughs) child in a village that got snatched let me live my dreams brandon maybe (laughs) that's possible that village still could have been in fontaine because in rosaria's character stories that you unlock as you ascend she says that her favorite food is not the sweet madame which is like her specialty it's beef bourguignon which is quite french And I'm like, if we're thinking of France, Fontaine, which is the French word for fountain. So I'm like, ah, two and two. Like, it's possible that she just has been around the world because no doubt if she was kidnapped, they're not going to stay in the same fucking nation. Probably going everywhere. You know what? She probably has been to places outside of this Tevat. 
and been around the world legitimately. Maybe she's like not even from this continent. She's from a different continent. A different continent. I'm throwing it out there. I have no evidence. These are some very worldly bandits. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how good of bandits they were as well because they were always starving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're a bandit, the first thing you do is steal a loaf of bread. I mean, Jean Valjean did that. Not Sean Valjean. <laughs> Don't bring him into this. <laughs> no, that movie drives me insane. Wait, doesn't it say that she was always cold too? Like to me, for some reason, I just always assume that she was from Smeshnaya. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, that might just be her personality, Brandon. <laughs> well, no, literally freezing. <laughs> like before she got her vision. Yeah, when they, they do mention that she has a very cold demeanor. But yeah, for the most part, in a lot of her backstory, when you're learning about her bandit life, it's usually always raining and cold. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like New York in the last few weeks. <laughs> Yeah, so from like two to about 18, she was just cold, hungry, and tired. Is that me? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she did, like I said, she was a crook. She was a thief. They taught her everything she knows. <laughs> and she basically, this went on for quite some time as they went around all these different places, whether or not it be Monsat, Iwe, or Conria, for wherever they were. And she actually like she kind of gets fed up so like i like the fact that her like kind of bitchy attitude even came in when she was a bandit she was just like i'm tired of being hungry so you know what i'm gonna leave and one of the elders is like oh you think if you leave you're a traitor and we don't allow traitors and all this kind of like macho macho-ness and said if you want to leave you have to beat me and challenged her to a duel not just you have to beat me you have to kill yeah. me <laughs> and she's like okay and while she was hungry cold and starving she was able to beat this old man the old man who is the actual one who stole her a pet may have came by and ate him we don't I think know scaramouche came by and had a snack <laughs> No! But did she eat him after? But, like, she doesn't know if he let her win, so she would, like, take his place. And, like, and at first, the rest of the bandits were kind of like, uh, we're not letting this chick run the bandits. Like, whatever their bandit gang was. Like, she, we're not going to listen to her. And then they were like, well, shit, maybe we need to, because I think part of it was... <laughs> Part of it was, well, she doesn't eat that much because she's a chick. So, oh my God. Yeah. A little, add the little misogyny into the bandits as well. But she did beat him because she got her vision. The audacity. I wonder what their gang was called, like Rosaria and the douchebag <laughs> urchins. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Rosaria gang, like the Arataki gang. No, not the Arataki gang. But yeah, that night when she beat him, she got her vision. So then I think that also kind of gave them a little bit of reason to be like, mm, vision wielder, probably going to be some help. I mean, not so much. Not really. <laughs> More so like vision holder. Okay, well, now she can really kick our ass. Yeah. We better just <laughs> let her be in charge. Yeah, I would say I'd be intimidated by anyone with a vision, especially like with a weird power dynamic like there probably mm -hmm. was in a, like a bandit group. <laughs> yeah, and she got her vision at the same time that she killed her father figure. Oh, mm -hmm. and she is a, a cryo vision holder for anybody who does not have her, which fits her <laughs> being that she's cold and potentially from Shaznaya and decaying apparently and traumatized so cryos the cryos the element of trauma uh, yeah and an orphan <laughs> she ice cold oh does that mean Shang Yu is an orphan she didn't have any dead friends so therefore she couldn't get an animal on right she's got no friends <laughs> <laughs> that's so sad when you think about it because she probably really has never had friends no. before mm -hmm. taking on her church gig. I mean, all the friends that she would have known were killed before anyways, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there probably have been plenty of people who have wanted to be her friend, like Babala. And she's like, no, mm -hmm. no. I know Rosari does not have a, like, a coastal, like, vocal fry, but every time I think of Rosaria, I think that she has one. <laughs> just like, no, no. Oh, I'm really glad she doesn't. <laughs> I'm really happy that like Rosaria isn't friends with Babs. Yeah, yeah. It would be it'd be really hard. I think that that would be a terribly toxic friendship. It's one of the closest types of 
maybe friendships that she has while she's in the church. Like that is almost like her boss though, but tries to be very friendly with her. And she goes out and drinks with Kaya all the time. But none of it's really because she's like, I want to be this dude's friend. It's like, oh, what can I find out from him? He's a bit of a lush. It's okay. He drinks and runs his mouth. He's like, let's have a friendship. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised she's not friends with Juliana because Juliana has a sort of similar story where she used to be a treasure hoarder mm-hmm. and is now like seeking refuge in the church. So you'd think that they would have some things in common, but yeah. I guess we're not really privy to their conversations. Yeah, like, or did Juliana not tell anybody? Because, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, it was Vale. What's her name? Vile. Vile. Or Vile or whatever. However, I think we just all call her Vile. I think it's Vile, yeah. And I, I think we brought this up even in our last episode. I, I really, I should mark it on our, our website. She tells, she basically sets up Juliana to get found out. So how Vile knows, don't know. Mm. But, you know, she figured it out, so... And she kind of was just like, oh, you know, it'll be fun. Let's ruin Juliana's cover. She's vile. Yo, vile is wild. That's a vile's like mad at her bestie, Sarah from Good Hunter, because she like flirts with Kaya, basically. And she's like, ugh, she'd do anything for Kaya. <laughs> I'm always like, vile, chill. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's outing everyone's like love life, secrets, family backstory. Y'all better yeah. keep your secrets close. Damn. Like, why are you so vile, vile? <laughs> <laughs> Just to go back, though, to, you know, to backtrack a little. Obviously, as you can tell, she's my mean. So I'm like, I know all this. I'm like, take it I mean, over. Her parents knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But to go back to her early life, too, you know, the bandits were eventually beaten by the Knights of Bogonius. And her being the youngest at that time, Varka actually decided not to kill her like the rest of them. He t- said, you know, he felt like she could redeem herself. And he basically made a deal with her and said, you can come live in Mondstadt. We'll give you food and shelter in exchange for you working at the church and redeeming yourself and trying to be a better person. And she has a, a voice line, too, where she says, like, Barca could be very long winded, but when he really cares about somebody, he goes all out for them, basically. So while I think it was a very genuine, kind hearted thing, I personally feel like there may have been a little bit of another story to it as well being that she has this nighttime gig of killing, I almost feel like that may have been a a bit of it too. But that's my own opinion because, you know, she does go through her training and stuff. So you're you're saying that you think that Varka sort of used this church thing to hide her dark side, even though he wanted her to employ her dark side on behalf of Monster. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And another thing, though, about Varka is that he is very well known for bringing in, like, quote-unquote misfits of the area. He mm-hmm. has brought in Razor and Rosaria. He let Ayula into the Knights of Favonius. And he's known for kind of making a place for those people. Yeah, and Rosaria actually thinks of Razor as almost like a, a little brother, too, because they both have this sort of father figure attachment to Varka. Yeah, we saw a lot of that in Up Ballads and Brews, that Mondstadt wine event, where Razor was trying to find out more about his parents because he found like that box with the wine in it or whatever Mm -hmm. you know rosaria very much wants to help him and is there for him and she says something about having like a familial relation with him and caring about him see she's not always cold Uh, that we know of (laughs) but wait is varka the female version of alice just collecting children (laughs) he could be i mean i mean varka he definitely lets some interesting people into the nights if you think of the current captains in the Knights of Avonius, you have Chalk, aka Albedo. <laughs> you have Eula, a Lawrence clan member. You have Kaya, who everyone knows isn't from Mondstadt. Like, it might not be known that he's from Conria, but everyone knows that boy ain't from Mondstadt. I'm sure Creep has told everyone about the little boy he found in his vineyard. And on top of that, you have Lisa, who studied in Sumeru and left Sumeru. And I'm sure Varka knew some secrets about her, too. So it's like, there's a lot of people in the Knights of Avonius that, like, are shady people. <laughs> mm, they're shady, but they're talented. I mean, maybe that's why he left them behind. (laughs) That's true. And it's just interesting because you would think of like captains and your knights would be like people from that like nation usually. So it's interesting that only Jean really is (laughs) an OG Mm -hmm. Mondstadter. 
Mm-hmm. You know, besides Razor, Rosaria really only has four people that she might consider close to her. And that's Varka, Razor, Barbara, and Kaya, right? Those would probably be her closest relationships that are alive. Yeah, I'd say so. Are any of them really friends? Um, I feel like they're more acquaintances. I mean, Varka, she obviously feels familial with as well as Razor, but th- I think she just thinks Barbara's annoying. And I think she gets a kick out of Kaya. Like, she, he mm-hmm. amuses her, I think. I don't know if she would call him a friend, necessarily. Yeah. I mean, even as much as she drinks, she says she never gets drunk because she doesn't want to leave herself vulnerable. But she very much enjoys the fact that Kaya does not have that same motto in his life. <laughs> and she is very sus, like, about a lot of people. And she's always kind of around the corner being like, what's going on? Like, who's doing what? And whether or not that is part of somebody asking her to do that or she's just a nosy ass bitch. We don't know. <laughs> I kind of get like neurodivergent vibes from her. Yeah. I can see that. She acts a little autistic in certain ways. Like, I don't know if you guys saw this story about how she has this journal that she got from the church and she would go and sort of just perch on like rooftops and she would write down stuff the Mondstadt Square vendors were calling out like wheat on sale two for one. Things like that. And like she has a notebook filled with just her writing down (laughs) the stuff that the vendors are yelling out at people. It's like, why why did she do that? Yeah, what did she need that for? Right. It could have been because they also in that story say that she has beautiful penmanship. Maybe she was just practicing. Yeah, maybe. I mean, maybe. Yeah, it's a good point is that she maybe probably didn't learn until later with Mm -hmm. the background that she had. Yeah, you think that bandits teach you like, you know, reading and writing and math? Depends on the bandit. No, I don't think the bandits (laughs) even know reading and writing and math. (laughs) I think that's the bigger question here is do the bandits know how to read? (laughs) No. No, probably not. (laughs) (laughs) So she would like leave training basically and go do these things and go almost kind of like go sunbathe and stuff, which apparently isn't something she still continues to do. But wait, she went to go sunbathing and her skin looks like that? At least when she was young and training. Yeah. What? She enjoyed being out in the air and listening to the people. Is that skin damage? (laughs) Maybe. I just don't think it's something that she continued to do once she became a full-fledged sister. The nuns just don't go out in yeah. the daylight. I did have a question for you. I feel like I'm asking, I'm like interrogating Tiff. <laughs> so you were mentioning earlier that Rosaria, you know, goes out at night and does all her killings. Uh-huh. Do you think she knows D. Luke's secret? I, yeah, she is very sus of actually D. Luke, Kaya, Albedo and Venti. All the best boys yeah. of Monster? All the ones who got shit to hide. So she's always like, you know, with D. Luke, she's just like, he, she does like the fact that he's very rich and discreet, but she thinks there's a lot more to him than meets the eye. Is that because she has learned about his underground spy society or because she, maybe she knows that he's the Dark Knight hero or kind of suspects it but even the same thing with kaya that is also one of the reasons why she likes when he spills his guts because she feels like there's something else going on there now is it that she knows he's from conria don't know or she's just like meh something's going on i is sitting there crying over d luke the entire time like no doubt in my mind yeah with venti I don't know. It would be funny if she actually knows that Venti is Barbados just because she says his name wrong all the time. <laughs> so it'd be really funny if she's like, ha ha, you know, Barsabados or whatever his name is. <laughs> Bobolanas? Bartobas. <laughs> like she says it's so wrong sometimes that like i think it was barbara overheard her giving a sermon or to some people and she said the name that way it couldn't have been barbara because barbara would have known it was wrong oh it was it was official it was official yes thank you yeah official heard her <laughs> yeah, and thought that it was like something legit because she was just like i mean why would a sister say barbados name wrong was it officials like oh she must be a dedicated like member of the church yeah. she was like oh she, she must have been praying it must have been some kind of prayer for this person because she was invoking the name of Barbados yeah. <laughs> while talking to them. And Oz is like, uh, I don't think that's what was happening. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, you don't know anything, Oz. Who is in charge here? Who is the presenting? <laughs> Me. Not you. 
even with Albedo, she knows that there's something up with him, whether or not it's that she knows about Suspedo or that she knows that he's made of chalk. You know, she kind of is always kind of lurking around and in his story quest, you even see her kind of being like, what's going on with this dude? Like, I don't know about him. There's something weird about him. But at the same time, she knows that he's kind of profound as well like so she kind of is kind of like hey he's cool but yeah in albedo's story quest she like talks to us outside of dragon spine and then she comes and finds us again and it's like after we've let albedo experiment on us basically for travelers who don't know what i'm talking about uh during albedo's storyline he basically is like you're not of this world and we're like oh sh- yeah how did, how did you figure that out that was easy so he's like i'd like to run some like tests on you and he like threatens us to like fight 18 oceanids at once and he tells us that paimon might be an extra appendage and it's like is this your <laughs> second stomach and we're like no we don't know what she is <laughs> second stomach that always like freaked me out like why would a second stomach be on a Attached from the body that would need nutrients for. I don't know, but I love it. Only Paimon dookies. I love it. Oh no. No, she she can't be the only one who dookies, okay? All right, we transfer all of our things through the mind (laughs) to Paimon so that we can fight more. So whenever we're fighting, she's actually taking major shits. Yeah, that's why she's never there. She's like, all right, I'll go take care of the bodily functions. (laughs) But they they just come out of stars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, so when you're like sitting in your like idol screen and she's just sparkling, she's actually dookie in a way. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Albedo at this point has like uh, already given us like a few potions or something to try, and we're like testing things out, and we're doing a puzzle, and Rosaria stops us, and she's like, Mm-mm-mm, "Not so fast! I need to make sure that nothing dangerous is happening." And we're like, "Uh, what?" <laughs> <laughs> and she basically tells us that she's watched us the entire time we've been without Beto. And she also kind of like scolds us for letting our guard down. And she basically says, like, how dumb are you to trust him right off the bat? Which, um, she has a point, though. I mean, we knew the dude for like five minutes and we're like, yeah, sure, we'll drink this shit. Yeah, Whatever. but we also just met her. We're supposed to trust her all of a sudden, too? She's like, not making us drink some crazy crap. He's a knight of Fagadius. <laughs> and she's a she's a sister she's a of the church. Oh, <laughs> smoke sings. <laughs> Yes, Mm -hmm. and she smokes in the back row. She got the skin color of someone who's a mermaid. I'm supposed to trust her? She's got claws that's going to murder me? Hold up. (laughs) Can we focus on the fact that she is, I mean, yes, there is drinking in this game, but she actually smokes cigarettes? Yeah, she's like a chain smoker too. Not Not just now and then. She's like constantly smoking <laughs> she's even more french than she was before it could explain her uh her skin color that's for sure oh my god well i'm supposed to trust her still i do like the fact that they added in the fact that barbara has to constantly tell her to stop smoking in the cathedral but they don't actually <laughs> show it they're like you know what we're not gonna we're gonna say it but we're not gonna i am glad for that her. i love i like to pretend like she's smoking cigars <laughs> she could be a pothead too Ooh, i would prefer that She's just high all the time. Yeah. That'd be great. And she's paranoid. So it could be based. <laughs> but to go back to like what Feeney was saying, like, why should we trust her? Like, we don't. And she, we shouldn't. And she points that out. And it's like, you shouldn't trust anybody. You shouldn't trust anyone. Listen, just because we're not from the world doesn't mean that we shouldn't trust people. We'd have no friends. Like Rosario. <laughs> exactly. So we trust people and we have friends. Who are you going to trust more? Can we make this our, our, Spotify. Who do you trust more, Albedo or Rosaria? What about Venti or Rosaria? The answer is Albedo and Venti. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't trust Rosaria. Nah, Rosaria is real as fuck, man. She is someone who has so much trauma that it's almost impossible to tell what her motives are, what her moral ethics and her like ethical code are. She was kidnapped as a baby, raised by bandits, killed her father figure, then decided, yeah, I'll go to Mondstadt and murder people all through the night. Venti is animo. So? <laughs> he lost a friend. What are we saying about Animo? Dead Friends Club. Dead Friends Club. Yeah. And you know what? She's just got a ton of dead people. And I think maybe she killed some of them. Because she did. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, let's just skip over the fact that Albedo is bathing in his brother's blood. He's bathing in his blood? <laughs> when bathing in his blood! I say, when the hell is he doing that? I missed that part of his story. He's researching his dead brother! I, if I had a dead brother that was a historical figure, I would research him too. Yeah, I, I would too. Y'all nasty. Y'all disrespecting the bodies of your relatives? I said I'd research him, not bathe in his blood. Yeah. How else are you going to research the effect he has on you? You do research that you got to go murder and bathe in blood, you crazy person. (laughs) I mean, that sounds more like something Rosaria would do, to to be honest. (laughs) No! Nah. She wouldn't bathe in it. She bathes in Kaya's blood every night. no. Wait, hold. I don't know why that made me think of pegging. (laughs) I don't either. <laughs> My favorite's ready going, I, I don't uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Look, Albedo is so It happens beta. to us all. No, anyway, Rosaria. <laughs> yeah, so she doesn't want us to get hurt by Albedo, but you are correct. There is no reason for the traveler to trust her but she's not handing them a uh, a vial of stuff to drink. But, you know, you can't trust her. She's a little, just by, like, the way she holds herself, you'd be like, eh, I don't know about you. What you doing? Yeah, you just look at her and you're like, mm. You're like, Ma, what? You're a sister? Like, really? It's like Sister Act. Like, really? You're a sister? I meant the movie, Sister Act. Wait, does she have a hangout? No. Because I feel like part of the reason we all think she's so sus is that we don't know her character that well. Yeah. It would be cool if she had a hangout. She should have one. Yeah, I feel like they need to explain explore her character mm-hmm. more in the game like give us more of the backstory like show us more of what motivates her yeah. i think we will i think at some point because i really do think she's from fontaine the chain smoking and the beef bourguignon like julia child has cooked her food i believe she's that french <laughs> and i know fontaine isn't completely like france and like Paris inserted into the game. But I do think we might have a bit more of that because when you think of justice and you think of it being juxtaposed by thievery and dark goings on in the night where she's kind of taking her own justice to protect the people of Mondstadt, I think that's a very interesting parallel that we could see in Fontaine. It would be good to highlight in Fontaine because justice is such a integral part of the ideas of Fontaine, I'm hoping. Unless she's from Notlon, and then we just get it from Notlon. And I wish we had more hangouts. Maybe she's the Vanessa reincarnated. Hmm. What? She's actually just going to come back. She is monster. And then it comes down to a whole nature nurture thing. Oh, you know? <laughs> Actually, that's an interesting point. She's she's a practical kind of lady, too. Like, she tells people, like, you know what? You shouldn't waste your time praying to gods or praying for other people. You should pray for yourself. Yeah. You know, which is obviously comes from her trauma. But she was just like, you know what? You got to look out for you, boo. Yeah, she has interesting layers, too, because she's seen as very lazy because she's, you know, kind of a bad nun. But she's actually is supposed to have a very professional work ethic like when she takes on a job like when she's out like doing a hit <laughs> but even Jean has a voice line about how well she does her job so you know that she is seen as lazy as a nun but in terms of being actually a lazy person she's absolutely not also I just want to start calling her vigilante auntie <laughs> Because she is our cold ass vigilante auntie. She's like watching over us, protecting us. She's always watching. Oh, and she will teach you a very good life lesson. Over time is not negotiable. <laughs> oh yeah. If you are getting, you need to get paid. She says <laughs> that in right. her idol, and she's like, mm-hmm. You need to get paid. One of the things that she loves about Lisa is her punctuality to close up at the end of the day. Yeah. She knows when <laughs> the workday is over, it is over. <laughs> she's like, I don't really like that she's a slacker when she's doing her job, but I love the fact that <laughs> she ends the work day on time. But also, like, her day has just begun type of thing when she clocks out of the church. Right. Like, she has the second job, really, and I think she's like, hey, I might be not doing that great at the church, but I'm getting paid regardless, and I have to go merc these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So Varka really can't let me get fired here. Yeah. And sometimes she's, like, gone for days, too. So it's not like, you know, (laughs) it's just an overnight deal. Like, sometimes she's literally gone, and they're just like, all right. What does Barbara think she's doing for, like, days on end? 
sleeping. That wholesome little girl. <laughs> I don't think she thinks she's out murdering. I think that Barbara thinks that she's asleep. asleep. Yeah, I mean, half the time she is asleep because yeah. she doesn't get in until the morning time. And that's when she has her morning cup of wine and her breakfast wine. Her, her breakfast <laughs> Shiraz. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then crashes, I'm sure, until, you know, late afternoon. She loves her dandelion wine. She, like, points out that she's not a flower type of person. She's not a vegetable type of person. But she loves the dandelion just because of how amazing the wine is that you can make out of it. And she even says something like, getting a glass of dandelion wine after a long work day is better than sleeping in on a Sunday. Which is very funny because she's sleeping in. We're going to assume that their church is Christian and she's sleeping through mass. <laughs> Or not for not that the church is Christian, but it follows that same type of yeah. that Sunday morning is is would be mass time. So the fact that she's like drinking this wine is better than skipping out of my job. Yeah. Very Catholic. Now we've talked a little bit about some ideas and thoughts we have around Rosaria. I know we mentioned that we think she might be from Fontaine. You know, Tiff, you were mentioning even Dragon Spine. Mm-hmm. I know Al, you're pretty hardcore on the Fontaine. I don't know. I feel like she's from Natlon. But I don't know why. I think Snez, I'm going to vote Snezhnaya. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. We don't know what Northern Fontaine looks like or is. We, I mean, we don't know anything. We don't know what Fontaine looks like. We haven't seen it on the map yet. So who's to say that North of Fontaine is Snezhnaya? And probably there's, you know a bit more cold and rain on the border and maybe there are more mountains maybe more bandits maybe more bandits <laughs> you never know for some reason all i think is like there's this giant mountain range and it's basically the alps and it's going everywhere and it's just cold as fuck but there's more evidence i believe for either fontaine or Shneznaya, and there hasn't really been anything pointing directly toward not long that doesn't necessarily mean that she isn't it could mean like maybe she was born and raised as a very young kid then taken to Shneznaya. maybe these bandits were you know trying to send her to dodore i mean I, I think i said she was very young i think at one point she is said to be even a baby so whatever she learned, she did not learn from where she grew up. So that's totally bandit life. And there's, it's likely that she doesn't actually know because they could have just said, oh, we, we picked you up at this such and such village. And when in reality, that might not even be true. I would hate not knowing where I'm from. Yeah, it would suck a little bit. Maybe that's why she gets along with Kaya too. You don't know where that place is from. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it really <laughs> depends. I think we all can agree though. In some sense... This woman is a spy. Yeah, definitely. But, like, I don't know if I think she's, like, a spy. Like, she's, like, a Mondstadt spy. Like, I feel like she's a spy for Varka. That's what I was thinking, too. That goes into, like, I have several different theories where she's either a spy for the underground network that Diluc is a part of and part of the Mondstadt division. (laughs) I'm giving them divisions at this point because there's so many people that could be a part of this goddamn underground society. Or... Maybe D. Luke kind of hired her to protect Mondstadt when he went on, you know, his journey. I really believed in that theory for a long time. I really thought she was a part of D. Luke's spy network. But looking at her actual voice lines about D. Luke, something isn't adding up because she sort of casts suspicion on D. Luke. Which, if you're a part of the same spy network, I would assume that you would be trying to keep your identities a secret Mm -hmm. so you wouldn't be saying things like because she's like isn't it obvious there's more than meets the eye to that rich tycoon he's confident yet discreet Mm, and even a little bit dangerous so if she is a part of the spy network i think that she doesn't know that d luke's in it which brings me to my third theory which is the one i'm very very pleased with because it's also feeney's theory i think of, she was recruited by Varka, like, was, was seen as very talented, real fucked up, and Varka was like, this is an asset, I can help her and she can help us. And instead of bringing her into the Knights of Favonius, where she'd have a lot more attention and wouldn't necessarily be able to do things slyly and it would be connected directly to the Knights of Favonius, he put her toward, you know, the Church of Favonius, where... 
She's seemingly innocent, but has the ability to sneak off and isn't directly connected to him. Yeah. Being able to do the dirty work that is, is necessary to keep Monsat like afloat. What you're, you and Feeney are saying makes complete sense that he, you know, originally was like, hey, why don't you join the church and turn your life around? But then probably quickly figured out like, oh, she's not really going to change, but we could use her skills to do the things that as Knights of Favonis, we can't really do. And I think it would make a lot of sense if she has been spying this whole time for Varka while Mm -hmm. he's gone and that there's some kind of like secret communication going on between the two of them that we don't know about. It's probably why she hangs out with Kaya so much. Because there might be a possibility that Varka was kind of sus of Kaya or maybe knows a bit more about Kaya's background than we realize. Because he said he seems to know so much and he's not even here, which again, his spy, Rosaria. And it would make sense in her, you know, voice lines when she's talking about Varka and everyone who's kind of been raised by Varka. So Razor. I wonder if Mika could be taking correspondence between Varka and Rosaria back Mm. and forth. That would make sense. That would make sense. So I guess the other thing about Rosaria that is really interesting to note, too, is her relationship with Scarlet. So Scarlet is the... I want to say replacement, but I know that's not the word. Apprentice to Jay from the Hexen Circle. We meet her in the Windbloom event, right? Yeah, we we meet this girl, Scarlet, in Windbloom. And when we first meet her, Rosaria is actually stalking her. That's so surprising. It's not surprising, but I think it's very curious. And I don't know if it's more curious about Scarlet or what. Because how did Rosaria know that this random person was here? What made her sus of Scarlet? Mm. There's only 12 people in Monsat. There's more than 12 <laughs> people. There's not that many more. Especially during Windbloom. I mean, when the 13th comes and they look different and they're not who you see on a regular basis, you're gonna look at them. Well, she wasn't stalking Tignari or Sino mm-hmm. or Kale. You don't know that. I, I do know that. Oh. Wow. No, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I just assumed that she was stalking her because she was like, "This, there's a new face here and I don't know who it is and I need to look into this. I will say Kale, Sino, and Tignari did hang around the Traveler when they first came. So Rosari could have been like, they're cool. <laughs> Bye-bye. That didn't stop Rosaria from stalking us when we were with Albedo. Yeah, but that was also in Dragonspine. Mm, I don't know. But I think it's interesting that of all the people she could have stalked and Hoyo could have like alerted us to that it was Scarlet. And I will say, you know, Scarlet, in my opinion, kind of looks Shnaznayan just because she had like winter clothes on basically. So yes. maybe this, I'm not going off a I lot. Agree. So I wonder if that leads toward Brandon's theory that Rosaria is from Shnaznaya. Because maybe she saw someone that she kind of recognized or she felt like could have been someone she knew and was like, "Mm." even if, you know, I know she was taken as a baby, but I would assume they stayed in Shnaznaya for a little bit. The bandits and, you know, her little group of bandits. Mm -hmm. She probably would know if the bandits were Shnaznayan. So even if Rosaria is not necessarily Shnaznayan, her bandit group might have been. Or I wonder if, you know, it really seems like Rosaria has like a a sixth sense almost. Like she can really tell that there's more than meets the eye with certain yeah. people as you all pointed out with how she feels about Beto, D. Luke, and Menti, even Kaya. So I wonder if that's something where we're going to see Scarlet again in the future. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I mean, she's got to be very in tune to different people. Just, you know, she's got to make sure she doesn't kill the wrong people out on the night. Right. That's true, too. So she watches people. And I think even if you go back to her little training days when she would go up to the roof and just write nonsense in her journal, she was really just paying attention. You know, and I think that that is part of her natural demeanor, but it could also be part of what she's up to, you know, of kind of like focusing on the small details to almost like profile people. True. I also thought it was interesting because by having Rosaria stalk Scarlet, It almost, like, gave them a reason to throw Rosaria into the entire Hexen Circle story because Rosaria does come with us up into the tea party area. So I'm curious if Rosaria has a relation somehow even to the Hexen Circle. Ooh, that would be cool. I would like Rosaria the Witch. Maybe she's actually taking the place of one of the the founding members. It definitely could be. 
Or, she, uh, you know, she could be someone in the Hexen Circle, for all we know. Isn't there someone co-named R in the Hexen Circle? Or am I ma- pulling that out of my ass? Did they call Gold R? Oh, yeah, R for Ryan Daughter. You're, you're right, you're right. But she's just known as Gold, I think, by, like, her closer yeah. friends. A.K. just Alice and Albedo sometimes. I don't know if they're close and friends. You. She's your BFF. My BFF? <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> But I don't know. I just think that would be interesting, especially if Rosaria, maybe Rosaria is not in the Hexen Circle, but maybe she knows witchy things. And that's why she might be more alert to someone like Scarlet. Like she could tell Mm -hmm. that she's a magic user, which would also be interesting. That might show why she stalked Albedo, too, if she knows stuff about alchemy through that. Maybe the bandits weren't bandits. They were witches. (laughs) They're definitely nomads. We know that. They were just all over the place. But yeah, I mean, she could have picked up anything. She could have been where she came from. Could have even been very magical (laughs) or like witchy. I don't know. I I like that idea. And I think like you always say that you feel like the end of the game is going to come back to Mondstadt. If that is the case, I think it would be really cool if she played an integral part in that. Or at least that some of these little mysteries would be resolved. Because she doesn't seem to be a... Well, she's my main character. (laughs) She's not Gedjin's main character. I think she would die. Oh, good. Just killing everybody. Well, well, damn. You don't think Am she'd I? die? No. She a bad bitch. She can't kill her. I think everybody's gonna die. Wow. At some point, whether or not it's in the game or after we're done. Wow. I mean, it's, it's the circle of life. Y'all call me <laughs> everybody negative. Everybody poops and everybody dies. Do you want to know what Tiff was telling me the other day? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> that you poop when you die? No, she didn't tell me that. But now I know. She explained to me the difference between dying in space of natural causes and dying in space if I took a cyanide pill. Yes. And she goes, if you're (laughs) you're suffocating in space, you got about four minutes and you'll pass out so you won't be awake when you die. If you take the cyanide pill, though, it'll only take two minutes, but you're awake. And I said, Tiff, and she goes, what would you prefer? I was like, Tiff, I can't even fathom what you just explained to me. So you never gave me an answer. I mean, technically, wouldn't you already be awake? Well, no, it, it, the whole idea of it is there's there's a, while well, NASA and the astronauts, they say it's not true, but it is true with cosmonauts of our friends over in Russia, um, that they are given a, a suicide pill when they go up to space. And the whole idea is if, if you're out on a spacewalk and you get lost, you know, you have an option. So your two options there, because if they can't get you, you're just floating into pure nothingness. So your two options are you take the cyanide pill, which will take only two minutes, but you're awake. Um, or you basically open up the hose a little bit and you'll go unconscious. You'll be unconscious and it'll take you a little bit longer to die, but you, you won't know anything because you'll be unconscious. So I think I've learned a lot about you, Tiff, today. No, you feel like Rosaria probably has a cyanide pill. Oh, yeah, she 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she's got a cyanide pill. Varka gave it to her, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Lisa made it. Lisa made it. Oh, no. Lisa made it specifically, <laughs> and you know what? There's backups so that she could just shove it down an informant's mouth in case it got too chatty. That's how Lisa <laughs> keeps people from like not stealing her books. <laughs> <laughs> she just pulls out like a bottle of Tic Tacs, and but she's like, you know what these are? Cyanide. <laughs> But I do think that's all the time we have for today before Tiff tries to kill us all. Oh, no. Run, y'all, run. Thank you, everyone, for coming and learning a little bit about Rosaria the Nomad with us. If you liked this episode or you had some thoughts and feelings you wanted to share with us, please let us know. You can follow us on Instagram, Tales of Tavop Pod, or on Twitter, Tales of Tavop. Additionally, you can send us an email at talesoftavoppod at gmail.com. Please don't be scared to send us anything. We love getting emails from people, so please feel free to send away. We look forward to reading your comments and thoughts. Otherwise, travelers, safe journeys. We'll see you next time. Bye, thugs. Thank you.